<laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, today we're going to focus on the tactics, on the strategy. So I'm going to give you some tips and tricks how you can play like a pro on the court and some good things that you can prepare with your partner and how to play paddle. tunnel you ever been in? Let me know in the comments below. I think this is the bridge, the bridge from the bridge. Have you seen the series The Bridge? It's amazing. So they find the body, half of it is in the Danish part and half of it is in the Swedish part and then they have to work together to solve the murder and that's not going well so it's amazing. You have to watch it. The Bridge is on Netflix, not sponsored. We're in Sweden! Make it bra, make it bra, yet the bra. Yeah, so this is Malmo. Malmo. This is where a lot of paddle courts actually are. Yeah. The paddle crew, I think, in Malmo, somewhere over there. Try harder. You see all the space that the Swedish people have, no wonder they built so many battle courts. There's a lot of space for battle courts here. I count a lot. Good morning. Yes, morning walk. I like this house. A lot of candles. So if you like more vlogs, because we also want to show you a little bit what we're doing and how we're moving around and how paddle is in different countries. Like Denmark was amazing. I think so much growth there in Denmark in a very healthy way. I think the message from everybody was like when I was receiving that in Holland, like in Sweden is going down, it's bad, clubs are closing. But if I talk to the people here, it's not so much that the people are stop playing Palo. It's more like everybody in Sweden or a lot of investors overestimated Palo in a short time because it cannot grow so fast as it was doing in uh, in uh, in the COVID time. So now it's different. So it's good, I think, if we show you a little bit how others people opinion just drive around just see some clubs maybe you are a club owner and you can get some inspiration like how, how to make a good pile of club and um, not like you have to copy everybody but you can learn from people's mistake and how they make the clubs um, I'm talking like this is my paddle racket I'm a bit sponsored now by um, Sol Stickman no um, but it's important I think to learn from people's mistakes to share Opinions about uh, what coach can I go to? Uh, is it good? Is it bad? If uh, is it is a nice place, can I go to holiday here? Um, yeah, so I think that will be nice. But now I'm gonna turn the camera off. I'm gonna relax. I think we're gonna watch Snowfall on HBO. I don't know if everybody saw it, but it seems to be super nice. Recommendation from the Paddle Technical Paddle family: Snowfall on HBO. So. Let's have a look. See you tomorrow. today so if you look on our Instagram we're gonna upload a lot of drills that you can do by two or three people sometimes it's not the time you invest but how you invest your time because if you do those boring exercises where you do the same thing over and over again like working with a ball machine you're not improving at all 
and I think we posted some some workouts that are nice to do if you just have less time but you want to improve fast I think it's a big difference Be careful for the car and uh, see our car already by the way Steers by itself, drives by itself. You have to don't you know, don't have to do anything anymore. Ladies and gentlemen, the Danish Palo Open. I'm gonna be there. I hope you're gonna be there as well. Uh, there are still tickets available, and if you would like to go there, we have a special 10% discount code. So click the link in the description. Oh, hello. Oof. It's very nice at the moment in uh, Krijonsta, Sweden. I have my coffee. I'm tanning and uh, we focused on making like softer shots. I think it was very effective, like the small preparation. Like a lot of people, if they want to play, they have trouble with playing f uh, slow because they're, they're coming from here. But the oh, your phone, Shasha, in the middle of my interview, to start like smaller and then always follow through, and just make your opponent run, and doing decision making, and uh, also with like low level beginners, you can still do a lot with playing to a certain place. So like, okay, play to the middle. Okay, play to the corner. Okay, uh, I. It's the best thing to teach, I think, to have that, um, how you say that, that decision mindset that you just, okay, I'm gonna play there, I'm gonna play there, I'm gonna play there. And if you just start to prepare slower, uh, smaller and, and, and softer and slower, you can play everywhere you want. You have to try it. It's gonna be nice. Five more minutes. And just mentally preparing for the next one. Are they cheating? They're cheating? Out. out! And it was not out. The line is wide. Oh, yeah. You, you can hear the line. Yeah. <laughs> okay, guys. What do you want to train? What do you need? He needs a slice. He needs slice. Yeah. Okay, what does he need? He needs a slice. Yep. And he needs he, need, uh, he need to go to the net. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And what do you need? I need everything. You need everything. Okay. I need concentration. Concentration. <laughs> but slice for him. He never slice. No? Uh, Bandeja! Wow! So if I close into the net... Yeah, yeah, exactly. Because uh, you didn't come forward with me. <laughs> nice! Nice! Mm. Yeah? yeah? Yeah, you have to be on camera all the time. It's the best. More motivation. Yes! Wow! That was your best one. And I saw it with you as well, Elsa. If I, if the ball is high and it's on my left shoulder, you have to help me yeah. because uh, this is very uncomfortable for me. Okay, bandeja. Nice. Yes. Keep playing to me. Aim on my feet, not too high. Then I can play down. Oh. Oh. Be careful for Sasha. Amazing. Oh, extra points, extra points, more, a little bit more speed, 
Yes, this is the what this is good. This is good. This is amazing. Again, killer. Yes. Oh! I categorized some opponents that you can play against. I'm gonna make the categories and then I'm gonna say what kind of strategy is gonna work very well against that specific opponent. So my goal for you today is that you can see in the warm-up uh, when you're playing a match what kind of opponent that is and then what kind of strategy you need to win against that opponent. It's not about winning or losing, but it's about gaining battle knowledge in order to win against players that might be better than you. But if you play a better strategy than your opponent, you can always win. I hardly believe that. So today, tactics. Ha! Nice! Hello and welcome everybody. Today we are in Nornik Wellness in Hasleholm and uh, we're going to work on some tactics today with of course the tactical paddle team. Vamos! 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 Vamos. Yes. Vamos. <laughs> Sorry, so we're gonna attack them, we're gonna kill them just by playing cross courts because that angle is the safest one to do and you make less mistakes. So I think if we start teaching people paddle or you're gonna play paddle matches, it's the best to play all of your volleys cross courts. So category A would be tennis players that don't use the wall so often. So I'm gonna make some strategies that you can beat a tennis player with. A tennis player normally struggles a lot when you play uh, slower shots. They find it easy if you play fast, they're very active, but if you variate speed, if you play slicey shots, if you play in front of their feet and to the fence and to the middle, they will struggle a lot. Very B would be paddle players that are good with the wall. And it might be more difficult to beat those players. So this is gonna be like a deeper strategy, but um, paddle players that use the wall, you can make them think a little bit more than tennis players because they are more trying to play the paddle game. Yes. Yeah, uh, we can, we can. We cut out the blooper, sir. No, we don't. <laughs> yeah, so now I'm gonna play a lot of cross courts because I can hear it a lot more. Benga. Yes, so what will be better for them is if they play more straight, so we have to switch. Yeah. Now you see that we cannot attack them so properly because they're switching to us. So it will be good to play a lot of few balls cross course if they play cross to you. But if you have to switch player too much, we're going to make mistakes and we at the net have to run more. So it will be better that we change tactic if this is going to happen. Okay, so strategy number two is attack one player. So let's say I'm playing loads of balls cross courts and they play straight. My partner is going to continue to play to the same defender. So it does not matter if they play cross courts or straight, we're still gonna attack one player. So that player is gonna get a lot of stress. That player has to move a lot and that's player is probably going to make a lot of mistakes because they get all the balls and one player has to wear his jacket and doesn't get any balls. This works well if one player is better than the other one or when somebody's stamina is just not good. Yeah, so now we, I made a mistake to play the ball in the middle, to play the dollar, so we had to move. And then that's the reason we made a mistake. Oh, venga. Strategy number three is build up in the center. It will be very good to play in the center because you move both defenders, maybe to the middle or one defender, and then the middle is open. So sometimes the, they're the same level, or sometimes the players are slow, some players are very good tennis players, then it's good to start in the center. Yeah. Oh. Yes. 
So now he's quite comfortable because we started in the cross courts. Now we're going to move him away from the corner by playing in the center. Vamos. And then in the corner. Oh, more in the corner. Good position. Uh, category C would be slow players. So if you see somebody that is like slow and cannot handle the speed very well, they are probably like they probably like to play from their base position and they are very good in taking the shots to their bodies. So I will suggest that you don't play to the players that are very good, uh, that are uh, don't play to the feet of the players or to the body of players that are very slow because they they do. They don't move a lot, so they're probably going to get a lot of balls here. So if you play to a slow player, you have to variate the speed, play slow to the middle, slow to the finish, maybe drop shots and sometimes accelerate with that faster forehand volley or with a faster smash in the center of the court where they cannot block the smash. Because you might think, oh, I'm going to smash a lot, but um, they might be very good in blocking. So if you just play fast in the center, the middle glass, they're not going to like that. D, magic hand player. So there are a lot of players that are like magic with the hands. They can do all the angles. So with those players, we didn't practice that in this video, but uh, you have to be aware that they can make angles. So sometimes you have to step in and close to the net. So some of the patterns that we did today, you can use against them because they magic hand players, they try to play a lot of low balls. They try to play the impossible ball towards the corner. So if you see that you're playing against magic hand players, try to close in on the net. And sometimes um, you have to expect the most unexpected shot. Vamos. You use all the parts of your racket. Yeah. Benga. Okay, dollar. So now, when the ball is high, we're gonna make the angle. So if you have a high forehand volley, you're gonna play to Jackie. If you have a high backhand volley, you're gonna play to Benjamin. This works well if the players can defend properly, but also if they cannot defend properly. So it, it always works, but you have to know from each other that you're going to do it. Because maybe I'm not in a very good position to play the ball there. So you have to know that if I have this back end, that I play there. So you cover that. So we need to be aware at the moment that we f help each other. Yeah, but that's good. Yeah, now change angle. Yes, exactly. To the fence. Yes. Exactly. That's why it works so well. Uh, otra bola. Yes. So you see it works well, but we have to both go and cover the other part. Okay, this strategy is gonna work well if you play against slow players or players that know how to use the glass, players that can, are very good by blocking the ball. So we are going to play a variation of, of soft to the fence and drop shots. So we try to get the players deep, like slow and deep shots. So the opponent is close to the glass and then we're going to play drop shot or to the fence. So they have to run now. Good. Vamos. So make them run. Let's say we play against Lebron and Galan. I would play like this. Probably don't win a point, but I try this. So the next strategy is to play slow and slicey. Because a lot of players that are from tennis or that they can block, they don't like if you play slow. So sometimes you need to think of, listen, we have to slow down the game because we're not 
in the rally. So now we're going to play a lot of slice and slow our shots to make the players move on the court. Yep. Yeah. Nice. That's the solution. Okay, so the next strategy is that we're going to play in front of the feet, which is a very good method if your opponents are very good with the glass, because then they are not sure if they're going to use the glass or they're going to play before the wall or they're going to play like a volley. If you play very deep, they're probably going to use the glass. If you play too short, it's also too easy. So sometimes you have to aim on the feet to make them doubt what they're going to do. Like this. Oh, That's too deep. That's better. Oh, bien. Yeah, so this is like a ball that is difficult to let go, so you're, I think this one you were not sure. Yeah. That's on the feet. Next one is uh, step in and accelerate fast. So this can be with a fast uh, overhead, like a fast Fibuda, fast smash, or fast volley that you step in and hit fast. This is very effective if you play against players that are super, super slow. So if you play on the left and you want to get the ball more often, it would be better to play in the cross court in the corner over there. And then my partner can move very close to the net to take uh, the ball out, to take a drop shot or to pressure. Okay, another thing you can do is to change direction. So if the play on the right is worse, but when you're playing on the left and you play better than your partner, you can also change direction, softer with a lot of slice into the corner parallel. It's a dangerous option, so you have to move fast to cover the court. This works well if people don't understand the wall correctly, or if they're very likely that they want to do something special with the ball. Uh. I think you can use the glass. Double wall. Sven <laughs> Decha. Nice. Okay, so if the play on the left is much better than the play on the right, the player on the right can play a slow fibra or bandeja or soft kick straight so the player on the left can enter the court. Nice one. You see, this is quite a difficult shot to defend. Another strategy that you can use is that if the player on the left also don't get a lot of shots, then the player on the right can play a soft fibra slash bandeja in the middle and the player on the left can step in. This works very well if it's on the back end of the player on the right side, if the player is right-handed, if the player is left-handed, it's on his back end side, but it's the same angle. Uh. Exactly. Nice, good variation. <laughs> uh, 
Um, also, when you accelerate, it's good if you play against slow players to play exactly in the middle, because then they cannot block the ball. So, and also with the overheads, it's possible. Yeah. Almost. Degree E players, like the, uh, the, the players that lob everything. And then you have to think of how can I play a ball that they cannot lob. And that's mostly shots that are a little bit shorter. So if you play like shorter balls that are fast, there is no rebound of the glass. So it's difficult to play the lob. If you play like these deeper, slower shots, they are quite comfortable with playing lobs. So you need to play like shorter balls. And a person that likes to play the lobs is like a defender. And what does a defender not like, and that is attacking. So if you play drop shots and lure them forward, it can be a very good tactic to make them in an uncomfortable position. And I think tall players, they don't like being low to the ground, turning, uh, solving those low shots, solving those low shots to the center of the court. So you have to slice and keep the ball low a lot. Um, if they go to the net, uh, sometimes they are very difficult to lob. So you want to keep them at the back of the court because they're, they're vulnerable at the back of the court. They are at their strength at the net. So you need to make sure that you are playing balls that they cannot play the lob on. Thank you all for watching and I'll see you in the next episode. Hasta luego, ciao, adios.